the Moon. This is one of the few space bodies you can observe without a telescope. It's the fifth largest moon in the solar system. At more than 2,150 miles across, Earth's natural satellite is bigger than Pluto. The moon's surface is pockmarked with volcanoes, craters left by space rocks, and pools of hardened lava. At one time, this lava used to burst through the crust when asteroids hit the surface. The moon is the second densest natural satellite in the solar system, after Jupiter's moon Io. Deep inside, the moon has a solid iron core, but it's tiny, a mere 1 to 2 percent of the moon's mass, and no more than 420 miles wide. It's surrounded by a liquid molten iron outer core. The mantle is more than 800 miles thick. It's made up of rock rich in magnesium and iron. And the outer part of the moon's interior, the crust, is 42 miles thick. Its outermost six-mile thick layer is mostly shattered. That's due to space bodies that have been hitting the moon for millions of years. The lunar surface is made up of oxygen, silicon, magnesium, iron, calcium, aluminum, and small amounts of other elements. Black holes are some of the most mysterious objects in the universe. They have an immense gravitational pull. Nothing, including light, can escape this force. For obvious reasons, no one has ever had a chance to check what's inside a black hole. But even so, scientists have managed to get a detailed image of high-density gas surrounding a black hole. It has a unique chemical composition with large amounts of hydrogen cyanide and hydrogen sulfide. This discovery can help astronomers find black holes that may be hiding behind dust. Comets. Nicknamed dirty snowballs, comets are icy space bodies that release dust or gas. Astronomers believe they're leftovers from the substance forming the solar system more than four and a half billion years ago. Some comets orbit the sun, but most of them can be found in the Oort cloud, the most distant region of our solar system. A comet has a solid nucleus with a small rocky core. The nucleus, which can be up to 10 miles wide, is made up of ice and dust and coated with dark organic material. This ice consists not only of frozen water, but also of frozen gases, such as carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, ammonia, and methane. Some comets may contain more ice or rock, while others have more dust. Once a comet comes closer to the sun, its icy part starts to turn into gas. This cloud is called a coma. It can be one million miles wide and up to 100 million miles long. Comet tails are formed by solar winds and sunlight. That's why they always point away from the sun. Asteroids. These irregular space rocks vary in size and can be as tiny as boulders or as large as football fields. They're solid, rocky remains of the disk of gas and dust that surrounded the young sun 4.5 billion years ago. Asteroids are made up mainly of rock or clay and silicates mixed with metal, like iron and nickel. Its composition depends on how close the asteroid is to the sun. If the distance is small, then it's mostly carbon with tiny amounts of oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Asteroids that are further away consist of silicate rock. Metallic asteroids are made of 80% iron and 20% other metals, like gold, magnesium, platinum, palladium, and nickel. Meteoroids. These objects are mostly formed when asteroids collide with each other. There are also micrometeoroids, which are super common throughout the solar system. Meteoroids are made of silicon and oxygen. Some of them contain metals like nickel and iron. Such meteoroids are dense and more massive. Stony meteoroids are much more fragile and way lighter. White dwarfs. Sooner or later, when our sun runs out of its fuel, hydrogen, it'll become a white dwarf. Once a star expels almost all its outer material, only its hot core remains and its temperature reaches 180,000 degrees Fahrenheit. After that, a white dwarf starts to cool down. This process goes on for the next several billion years. Paradoxically, the more massive a star is, the smaller its size. Inside a white dwarf, gravity squeezes the matter so tightly that electrons making up the star's atoms get smashed together. This process goes on until there's no free space to be taken up. 
That's why a teaspoon of the white dwarf's matter weighs more than five tons, as much as an elephant. Astronomers think white dwarfs might have a crust no wider than 30 miles below the star's atmosphere. The bottom part of this crust is likely a crystalline layer of oxygen and carbon atoms. Gas giants. Unlike rocky planets with metals and silicate materials in their composition, gas giants mainly consist of gases. That's why they're usually much larger than their terrestrial mates. Saturn and Jupiter are the most famous gas giants in the solar system. At the center of a gas giant, there's either a molten ball of solid or liquid rock or a metallic core. Without it, a gas giant can't form. But the main parts of the planet's mass are gases surrounding the core. They can be different, but the most common are hydrogen and helium, with some traces of methane, ammonia, and water. Gas giants don't have any solid surface. Their atmosphere just gets less and less dense the further it is from the core. Somewhere along the way, it might even become liquid. Pulsar. This spherical object is usually the size of a large city, but has more mass than our sun. Pulsars often look like flickering stars, on and off, on and off. Their blinking seems to have regular intervals, but in reality, pulsars don't flicker. This space body is a rotating neutron star with a mega strong magnetic field. It can be up to a million billion times more powerful than Earth's. This magnetic field sends streams of particles along its two magnetic poles. They create two powerful beams of light shining in opposite directions. That's what makes pulsars look like they blink while spinning. A pulsar's core is super fluid. That means if you stirred it, it would rotate forever. The core is surrounded by an inner crust and a rigid outer crust with a crystalline surface. Red giants. Sometimes, when a star uses up all its hydrogen, its helium atoms start to form into larger elements, such as carbon. The star's core collapses inward under this pressure, and its outer layers spread out and cool. The star becomes larger and colder and gets a red tint. The thing is that when a star's outer layers cave in under gravity, they heat up. And once the shell around its central core gets hot enough, the star gains a new source of energy. Its core becomes even hotter than before, and the star's outer parts swell, turning it into a red giant. In the heart of the star, there's a central core that consists of iron, while a layer made up of nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon surrounds this core. Then, there's a helium shell and an outer hydrogen mantle.